Total internal reflection in a prism is used in a periscope of a submarine and also in binoculars and cameras to invert the image without any loss of intensity. It is also used in slide projectors. Internal reflection through a right isosceles prism whose interior angles are 45, 90, 45. In the first case, we find two parallel lines passes undeviated because they are incident at right angle and strikes the second surface of the prism. In this case, we can find out the angles because this is a right isosceles prism. So, this angle is 45, this is 90. So, definitely this angle will be also 45. If this is 45, perpendicular is drawn out here. Therefore, angle of incidence over here will be also 45. 45 is more than the critical angle of glass that is 42 degree. Therefore, total internal reflection will occur and we will get the angle of reflection also as 45 degree. If this is 45 degree, again this will be also 45 degree. 45, 45, this will be 90. That means the reflected ray strikes the third surface at 90 degree passes undeviated out. The deviation, the total deviation is through 90 degree. This application we find in a periscope of a submarine to see a brighter image. In this case we find that the incident ray is incident perpendicularly but from the side opposite to right angle that is this is the hypotenuse of this prism when it is perpendicularly incident it will pass undeviated and we can find out the angles similarly as before if this is right angle this angle will be 45 degree, this angle will be also 45 and this is more than 42 degree. So, total internal reflection occurs, angle of reflection becomes 45 degree. Again, this angle is also 45 degree. Therefore, total internal reflection occurs. It strikes the second surface and again we can calculate the angle, this angle, this is 90, this is 45, we calculated before, so this angle will be also 45, if this is 45, this is 45, 45 is more than critical angle 42 critical angle of glass and so again total internal reflection will take place. So, this angle is also 45. If this is 45, this is 45. Then the ray is actually perpendicular and so it passes undeviated. This deviation is through 180 degree. Here we can see the object changes its side and becomes its image. We get the application of this action of a prism in a binocular and camera to invert the image without any loss of intensity of light. In this case we find two parallel rays of light is incident in the first surface 
it undergoes refraction then it undergoes total internal reflection and again it undergoes refraction this particular action of a right isosceles prism is used to erect an inverted image without deviation in a slide projector here we can see the inverted object which becomes erect twice refraction is taking place and once total internal reflection is taking place total internal reflection through an equilateral prism 60 degree 60 degree 60 degree in the first case we find the ray of light is incident to the vertex of the prism at right angle because it is incident at right angle it passes undeviated strikes the second surface we can calculate the angles out here 60 90 30 if this is 30 this will be 60 so it undergoes total internal reflection because 60 is more than the critical angle of glass that is 42 degree angle of reflection is also 60 therefore this angle is 30 again we can calculate and find out that the ray strikes the third surface at right angle so it passes undeviated outside the prism in the second case when the ray is incident normally but nearer to the base of the prism it is incident normally so it passes undeviated strikes the base as the second medium here we can calculate the angle 60 90 so this angle is 30 therefore angle of incidence is 60 which is again greater than the critical angle so it undergoes total internal reflection so this is also 60 we can calculate this as 30 therefore it strikes the third surface at right angle 30 60 90 and passes undeviated outside the prism total internal reflection through a right prism 30 90 60 in the first case we find the face of a right prism 90 60 30 where the incident ray is perpendicular on the first surface and we can calculate the angle at which it is striking the second surface and that is 60 30 90 60 so the angle of incidence is 30 hence it is not undergoing any total internal reflection it is undergoing refraction and thus it goes out of the prism in the second case in the same right prism where this is 90 60 30 an incident ray strikes the side which is hypotenuse opposite to 90 at right angle passes undeviated strikes the second surface we can calculate the angle this is 90 this is 30 therefore this is 60 we can also calculate the angle at which it strikes the second surface and that is 30 and therefore it does not undergo total internal reflection it undergoes refraction and comes out of the glass prism in the third case we find that same isosceles prism 90 60 30 but the incident ray is incident at 90 that is perpendicular to the hypotenuse but it is nearer to the base so it strikes the base at 60 degree we can calculate again 90 60 30 therefore 
this angle is 60 degree and therefore it undergoes total internal reflection as 60 is more than the critical angle 42. So, the angle of reflection also we get as 60, this angle is 30. So, 90, 30 we get this angle as 60. Again, the angle at which it strikes the third surface is 30 degree. Therefore, it undergoes refraction and comes out of the glass prism. In this way, we can calculate the angles by the property of the triangle. Sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degree and can find out the path through which light will travel inside the prism and outside the prism.